We're back here at the uh, Monarch Lathe, and in a previous uh, Screwy Tuesday, I had discussed that I had picked up this dead center, and I was looking to modify it down to a Jarno 12 taper, so it'll fit into the headstock here on my uh, Monarch Lathe. And in the discussion, I talked about the fact of how to hold this part, and that I had a uh, live center here that had an attachment for um, a 60 degree taper and if you can see here the there's a slot here where you can actually push the unit out and here is the uh, rest of the tips that can interchange with the unit there so it's really a nice little selection um, the uh, manufacturer um, Kabato out of Japan. So that was my first thought of using this. As you can see over here, I've got this is a number three Morse taper. So I have a uh, Morse three to a Morse two taper. So I have a lot of stick out there. So I really don't want to, uh, if I had no choice, then I would use this, but I have another alternative. I have another unit. It's a, a do-all. And uh, this unit, you can unthread the various um, tips. Now, this is a, a 5 8 18 thread. And I think this piece was designed, since it has um, some uh, holes on each side, that it was designed as a sacrificial piece. I've done a couple scratch tests on it, and I'm pretty sure it's machinable. So it's a choice of either machining a, cutting a 60 degree center in here and being done, or making a new piece here um, to create the 60 degree center. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just go ahead and cut this. Um, the This unit also came with uh, various other, other tips, a 60 degree center, and then some other ones that are replaceable. So you can actually remove these and create various um, setups. You know, this one was stepped for going into a bore. Uh, this one has actually a thread on it that somebody did in the past. I thought about going ahead and just making a tip that would go into here and not cut a 60 degree in here. I, I have used this to push with. Um, I still could push with it. So kind of thinking about that. I'm going to make a decision here whether I make something to go into this guy instead, an insert, or I machine this. If I machine this, it's just a lot, a lot more mass, and I, I'm assuming would be stronger as I go ahead and uh, do the machining on this piece. This is going to be hard turning, so the better support. Now going to a Morse taper two here, I'll be able to not have such a stick out on the uh, tailstock. To be determined. This photo shows a gauge pin in the six jaw chuck. Well. I had chucked up the live center in the in the six jaw and it was out by five thousandths. And I said, what the hell? I had taken the um, six jaw off and I had put it back on. And for some reason it was running out five thousandths. So I ended up put a gauge pin in to check it. And of course the six jaw was running just tits. So I ended up rechucking the live center back in and uh, found that it also ran tits. Well, I just talked to you about the issue I was having. Showed you with the gauge pin. I put it back in the uh, machine and as you can see the needle's not moving. So, um, I had a uh, an alignment issue when I put it in there. It's going a little further just to make sure I got 
and it's fine. So we'll go ahead and uh, get the 60 degree center in here. Operator air, that's all I can say. It's running perfect right now. This video shows a center drill that I have in the drill chuck there that's quite a large one that I have. And as you'll see, uh, it uh, kicks out. I tend to do, forget that the damn thing's dull. And uh, so take that one out and we'll move on to another one. So here I'm using a, a sign bar to set the angle on the compound. And I got it pretty well dialed in. I'm real happy with it. And if I've got this set right, this should be the same degree angle as the internal taper in the uh, headstock there. So we'll get a uh, indicator set up and see if I uh, got this calced correctly. I decided to uh, rough the center down uh, on the clausing here rather than on the on the Monarch. A little bigger tooling. It's hard turning, um, and uh, I've been running trim saw with a brush, and I've gotten through the hardness here. But it, it, you can see there, you might be able to see it. It until it breaks through that hardness, when it, it'll back drag as it comes back. Once it gets through the hardness, it stops. So uh, I'll, go, I'll show you guys one pass, but I'm not going to film this as I go. I've got about a quarter inch to take down on this. Only taking ten thousandths a pass. Anything uh, heavier just wasn't uh, wasn't doing it. You guys are in the way. Let's see if I... you can see how it's back dragging there, and then it'll basically stop. So I get back there.
Okay, enough of the show. We'll continue on. Bring you back. Well, I got a hundred thousandths to go, and uh, the closing just put on me. She won't engage. She'll spin, but uh, something broke. That's uh, that's a no good. Well, as you can see, I got the uh, back of the lathe open and uh, don't have any serious problems. The lathe is back running. For some reason, right here is the uh, pin for back gear and it pushed out and released the spindle. I don't know if that's a problem happening or what, but we'll go back to uh, finishing up the cutting and see if it pops again. So, simple fix, so I'm happy. I can put the covers back on. Here's just a shot of the uh, final setup that uh, helped me find the taper inside the headstock. As you saw, I, I used a sign bar to get it close. Well, I was chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. And I kept having a 5,000s, I got it down to 3,000s air. And as I was bumping the compound back and forth, uh, I just could never, never find it. So I had my good buddy Carl come over to help me. And it's always great to have another set of eyes look at something. And after about 15 minutes of doing the same thing I was doing, and we kept you know, running it in and out, in and out, um, he finally said, hey, let's put a indicator on the back side of the compound so we can see the ratio of what we're doing here and that gave us the the answer to finding the taper um, I had moved it enough tried enough a couple times but anyway uh, as we were if we moved the thousands indicator on the back here four thousands we would barely even get a tenths all the way up there uh, as we were chasing the uh, chasing the taper. The good news is uh, finally got it and uh, probably moved probably moved the compound well over 20 thousandths uh, from where I had it. Um, it would have been interesting to have my original sign bar set up and had this set up and to see how close I actually was. Like I said, I, I had bumped this thing all over the place. But uh, Right now it's, uh, I don't know if you can see the needle down there, but it's tracking the uh, taper. Perfect. So we can move on to the next step here and uh, start uh, machining the taper for the uh, Jarno taper. It's a number 12 Jarno. Well, I forgot to turn the microphone on, so I'll do a voiceover here. This is a CAD drawing, and the red diagonal stripes uh, is the existing 
dead center that I have. And you can see the tail on the left side, which is what I've been holding it in the chuck. And then the blue is the what will become the taper. Uh, 2.75 is the length of the taper that I'm shooting for. And um, I wanted to show you this because I'm going to reference this in the uh, next portion of the video here. Again, I forgot to uh, turn the microphone on there. Um, it's important though that I get the layout of this correct so that it fits into the uh, taper. Again, here's a uh, voiceover. Well, Charlie forgot to turn on the microphone. So you can see that I have uh, still have the dead center in the closing lathe. And I'm basically talking about my drawing there and the fact of trying to work the layout of the dead center as it goes into the Jarno taper. Um, it's, it's critical that um, the dead center doesn't stick out too far, nor can it go in too deep into the, um, into the headstock. So what I have, I'm going to show here is the, the dog plate and the dog and the engagement of the dog. The dog plate is going to ride just, just behind the 60 degree center there. Here I'm grabbing the dog plate there. There's the dog plate and I need about five eighths of an inch um, behind the dog plate. So if the front of the dog plate is at the back of the 60 degree, that'll work out just about perfect. And I'm going to actually show uh, putting a dog there on the front of the 60 degree. Um, which illustrates the fact of the distance that is necessary so that the dog will actually uh, engage in the dog plate, the dog drive. So I think I got it worked out. If it's, if it's sticking out too far, it doesn't work. And uh, I can air the other way somewhat. So it's critical on figuring out the dimension as it goes back in. So the piece that's there in the chuck, I need to turn that down smaller than the smallest part of the Jarno taper so that it can go back in. Um, that's what I'm discussing right there. I'm going to actually take this part out, move it over to the Monarch. Since I have a straight shaft right now, I can hold it in the six jaw chuck and I'll turn that tail piece down and actually uh, make it make the starting point for the taper also and then uh, it'll be ready to get going and cut a taper and then I'll I'll go shy of my drawing and start test fitting from there and hopefully uh, be successful um, look it's, it's I've been having a lot of fun with this build this is going to be part one we're going to end here um, and but it's I've had a lot of fun trying to figure this out and uh, the hard turning uh, was definitely an adventure. I want to thank everybody for uh, stopping by and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hey, hit the subscribe button. Keep my channel growing. Keep me motivated to uh, make videos. They're here for your entertainment and enjoyment. And uh, I really, uh, really uh, happy of all the friends I've made uh, through the world from my hobby machining. Thanks again and see you soon for part two.